So I just got this Flysky FS GT3B in the mail. It's a uh, 2.4 gigahertz three channel transmitter. This is a updated version of the original GT3B that you see here. I've reviewed this before. It looks a lot more modern now. Um, it's got a backlit screen, a bigger LCD screen. They've redesigned the, the shape of it as well. One of the first things I noticed right off the bat is the packaging. It's a lot smaller now. This is the original GT3B packaging. As you can see, it's about double the size. And the transmitter isn't that much bigger than as well. So it was a lot of foam in there. So I'm glad that they finally shrunk down the packaging. There was a lot of wasted space. So let's just open this up and we'll see what you get. So the packaging now is very minimal. There's not a whole lot. One of the first things you'll see is the transmitter, of course. And it comes with one receiver. This is a FSGR3C receiver. These are the new receivers that have a failsafe. You can tell because next to the LED, there's a little button that you can press to set, to set the failsafe. And included is this CD here. I haven't looked inside what the CD includes, so I'm thinking it includes VRC, uh, the, the VRC simulator software, because it says it on the box. Um, and then you're left with the transmitter itself. So the transmitter has been redesigned. It actually looks a lot better, I think. It looks a lot more futuristic, cleaner design. Uh, a bigger screen. Most of the buttons are on the top and the steering dial and the antenna folds down like that. So that's really cool. It looks a lot like the Flysky FS GT2 actually. I have a GT2 right here. So I think they kind of modeled it after the GT2. The GT2 of course is a very simple version of the GT3. Uh, it doesn't have a screen and it doesn't have uh, model memory and it just uses a bunch of dials and switches to change settings. So, But it's a very capable transmitter if that's all you really need, a simple transmitter. On the side of here you can see the charging port and the DSC port. The DSC port is used to plug up to your computer so if you have one of these cables here I got this cable actually with uh, a, a helicopter I bought and it's basically a mono plug on one end and a USB cable on the other. Then you plug this up into the port and then you plug this in your computer and Windows would detect it as a input device, a gaming device and you can use this with VRC, uh, Duratrax, Real Race or, or any other game that uses uh, DirectX input. In terms of changes to buttons, there, I noticed that the, a lot of switches that were originally on the the original GT3 are gone. Like these switches here around the the dial, this one here, this button here, um, a button under here, these two switches here. So they're missed. They're gone now. They've removed it. Um, I don't really miss these because I never use them anyways. But these buttons around the, the steering and down here, they're all programmable. There's also an auxiliary button here. This is for channel 3 to turn it on and off. Those are kind of missing now. Although there is a channel 3 button here. It's not lo no longer called auxiliary. There's a channel 3 button. And there's a couple of switches down here named channel 3 trim and dual rate. And that's about it. This is where most of the buttons are for programming the transmitter. You can turn it on and you see this nice lit back screen. So right off the bat, I'll show you the voltage of the batteries of this transmitter. And that's the model name. What I really don't like about it is that the model names now are only represented by three characters. Um, with the GT3 here, it actually it was represented by eight characters so they've limited that because of the DPI of the screen. The DPI of the screen is very low. Um, that's probably why they did that. So there's only basically three 
characters here that changes, right? So it's very limited display, I think. It has 10 model memory, and to change something, you hold down the button, and then you select through, like that is uh, name, reversing, I think that says endpoint adjustment, uh, ABS, exponential, that is dual rate, and trim. So it's also missing some features because on the GT3 here, it had steering delay and a throttle delay. So it's missing some of the features. And it also had the ability to program the various switches around throughout the transmitter to do different things. Um, that's also gone because this one doesn't actually have any more switches. So I think in some ways it's a good thing they've simplified the transmitter. They've gotten rid of stuff that I normally don't use anyways. I didn't ever use steering delay. It, it kept most of the features I wanted, which are endpoint adjustments and trim and dual rate. And sometimes I use exponential. So it also has 10 model memory. The original GT3 only had eight. So you get to control two more models. You get to have um, settings for, for more cars or, or boats. So that's a good thing. Like the GT2 and the later versions of the GT3, this transmitter uses frequency hopping. Basically, um, frequency hopping is when the signal is spread across multiple channels within the 2.3 gigahertz band. So if one channel has interference, it just hops to another channel to communicate. Um, I think there's about 16 or something channels that it hops around in. Um, whereas the earlier versions of the GT3 or FlySky models, they only had uh, one channel in the 2.4 gigahertz band to use which is not good because if there's interference and stuff like that it would lose signal with the uh, vehicle so you know even the the little known Chinese companies like fly sky or free sky they have frequency hopping in in their radios now and overall I think this is a great update to the original GT3 here I think it looks a lot better cleaner lines, it's got a bigger screen, and I'm a little disappointed in the the amount of characters that you use to to represent a model, like you know, but that's not really a big deal, I think. But you are limited to three characters per model name, so that's that's the only downfall I have for it. The DPI on the screen is not very good. I think it's just a cut down cost. But it's it does the job and the backlight really helps. So if you're looking for a new programmable radio with a bunch of features and you're wondering which one you should you get, uh, definitely take a look at FlySky. But And then you're deciding which one should I get, the GT3 or the GT3B, which is the latest version. It's kind of a tough call, but I think I'd pick the GT3B, the B version, because it's smaller. It looks, I think it looks better. This one is a more modern design. So I, I'd probably recommend this over this one as well. Like I said, there's it has a few more features than the B version, but those are features that most people wouldn't use anyways. You know, it's missing features like throttle delay and steering delay. Throttle delay was kind of cool because when you went full throttle, and you know your tires would spin out, and with throttle delay, it would actually kind of gradually increase the throttle for you. Uh, to avoid wheel spin so it's kind of like traction control so I kind of miss that so that's about it I hope you find this review useful and maybe I hope you decide which kind of radio to get so if you're a beginner probably look at a GT2 and then once you get used to it maybe look at something more uh, more advanced like this GT3B and you can't go wrong with either of these they're they're both pretty good I plan to keep this one anyways um, Great thing is they use the, they all use the same receivers. So I'm going to show you how to bind this receiver to the GT3B. What you're going to do is plug the blind bind plug, which is included with the receiver, to channel three. Then you'll be plugging the speed controller or battery to VCC. Then you'll turn on the vehicle. So when you turn on the vehicle, the LED will keep on flashing, like that. And what you're going to do now is hold down the bind button on the GT3B here, and then turn on the power button, which is over here. 
So when you do that, it'll start to bind. So once you do that, you'll notice that the light is solid red now. So that means that it's already bound. So this will talk with this receiver only. So what you're going to do now is turn off the battery to the receiver, remove the barring plug, and turn off the, the transmitter, and turn on the transmitter, and then turn on the receiver. So to verify that it is working, I'm going to plug a servo to this receiver. We're going to put it on channel 1, because usually steering is on channel 1. And there you go, as I turn the, the steering wheel, so does the, the servo moves. So you know it's uh, perfectly bound. So now I'm going to show you how to set the failsafe. So what a failsafe does is when the receiver loses signal with the transmitter, it will return to a preset uh, position. So in the case of a car, you'll, want, you'll probably want it to go to brake position or neutral. To set the failsafe on a FlySky receiver, it's pretty easy. What you're going to need to do is turn on the receiver and the transmitter. So we'll turn on the transmitter and then we'll turn on the receiver. The failsafe only works on channel 2, which is throttle. So I plugged up a servo to show you what it does. So basically to set the failsafe, what you're going to do is put your transmitter in the brake position. So let's say you want to set the failsafe so when the receiver loses signal, it will return the throttle to brake position, like this. So what you're going to do is hold the throttle in the brake position, the throttle trigger in the brake position like so, right? And that moves the, the servo like that, right? And then you press the fail safe set button. So you're going to put that in and then press the the fail safe set button here to beside the red LED you're gonna hold it down and you'll see it starts blinking and then you let go and now the fa fail safe is set so now we're gonna test it out so you're, you're going full throttle like that and then what happens you lose signal let's say you, you turn off the transmitter as you can see it moved to the fail safe position so let's do that again. So the fail safe position is there. Right there. That's brake position. Right? Right there is fail safe position. And then we go full throttle, which is this position. We turn off the transmitter, it loses signal, and then it automatically returns to the brake position. So you can see how this is very useful. It could uh, stop your car from running away if you ever lose signal, if the battery dies on the transmitter or there's interference. Whatever the case is, um, it will return to a preset position, which is the brake position, which is really useful. So definitely if you have a car or a plane or a helicopter or anything, it's always great to have a failsafe because this can save you a lot of money and it could prevent you from hurting somebody or yourself.